Coming up, emotional first contact with home. I'm just a bit sad to hear your voice. A desperate last minute search for Rhino. We do need to find one before we get to the place. And the going gets tough in the desert dunes. We come up to sand dune, and you can see us more sand dunes. The serious desert expedition is in its final stages and the eight adventurers are feeling the strain of endless trekking. My feet are really, really hurting now. It's like they're throbbing and they're swollen because of the heat as well. Their mission is to search for rare desert rhinos to help protect them from poachers. But after scouring the Namibian desert for more than two exhausting days, all they found is some dry dung and a few footprints. We can't find them, they're nowhere to be found. We need to find a rhino, I'm quite worried about that. With limited supplies, the team are now starting to run out of time. They've only three days left to find rhino and walk another gruelling 40 miles out of the desert. David and Perry are setting a blistering pace in the 40 degree heat. It's not going down well with the girls. Them lot are walking too fast, they're speeding ahead and we're meant to be in front of them. It's going a bit slow. They, they know themselves that they'll have to try a bit harder just to keep up with the rest of us. You right, Promise? But Promise has a knee injury and the expedition doctor wants to check her out. It's not like on the okay. outer thing, okay. it's like I can feel it when I walk okay. I'm just going to look The boys it. are less than sympathetic. I know, like, it's quite hard, but they just have to put it with it. Like, they knew we were going to do this and we've set targets for us, so we want to try and get as far as we can. We haven't seen any rhinos yet and we've only got tomorrow morning to see them. So uh, we have to get our crack on. We do need to go faster, but we can't if somebody is hurting. And Promise isn't the only one suffering. Uh, my feet at the moment are really, really sore. I've got new blisters coming up, and it's just my whole foot now is really, really hurting me. Fortunately, it's Perry and David's turn to track up front away from the group. Freak rainstorms mean the rare rhinos are especially hard to find, but they quickly get on the trail. I've just found some fresh spoor. So we're following the tracks. And because the prints are only about two, three hours old, I think it may be just over this ridge. So we have to get there as soon as possible. They're marching at an impressive speed in the midday sun, but still seem to be getting no closer. I think it may have uh, legged it because see has been running. As they come to the edge of a ridge, the reality becomes clear. They've no hope of catching it. The chocolate resorts, the vinyl smells, and it's just sprinted away. So we've got no chance of finding it. And it's starting to get too hot for us. So we've decided we're going to turn back and try and catch up with the rest of the team. It's the third day in a row they've failed to find a rhino. As the group comes together to make camp for the night, tempers are at breaking point. Well, how, what am I supposed to do when he's telling me to go that way and you're telling me to go that way? What? And then you just stand in there yawning? Yes, because there's nothing to do. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing to do. Well, those guys are doing well. We spend so much time with each other now that we're just constantly biting each other's heads off. We've lost our poles and we haven't got no pegs, so we can't put up our tent and the boys are refusing to help us. Yeah, it's like, Paris not even doing anything. He's just being like... Just being annoying. The expedition leaders decide it's time to raise morale and call the group together. How do you think you did today? Good. Absolutely. Rubbish. Well, I think, and I think Bruce and Sammy did well. You did really well today. You've well. covered a lot of ground. As a little reward, we'd like to give each of you a satellite phone call home. Oh, no! Oh, my goodness! Oh, no, yeah. I'm going to be bob blubbering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who, who wants to go first? Real cool. Amy, just because yeah. I think there might be a um, Holly in. Are you right, Holes? <gasps> yeah! Oh, ready! I think you should give Holly a bit longer because four minutes of it will just be crying. <laughs> <laughs> They've been in Namibia for over two weeks and have had no contact with home until now. Hello, Mother. Hello, son. How are you doing, mate? I'm all right. Oh, 
your rhino i got the help like the vet we, we we're darting them from helicopters it's really hard really hard but it is really good i bet you sound like you've got a cold yeah i have in the middle of the de desert it's a bit stupid really <laughs> okay i'm just a bit glad to hear your voice you know i get emotional i just it's because i'm talking to you nina will understand what i say you know Eh? Nina will understand what I say. Have you been able to wash and freshen all your clothes up and things? Wash? Uh, no chance at all. I love you too much. We love you loads, Holly. Go on, Mum. You've got to go. Aye, I'll just... I love you loads. Aye, wait the end. See you soon. OK, see ya. Bye. 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 Lunatics. Love ya. Mad. I love you so much and I'll see you all my day. I really, really miss you. I'll see you then. Tell everyone I love them. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. It's been an emotional day in the desert. Next morning, contact with home seems to have lifted the mood in camp. It was like really nice to hear the voice. I'm just going to enjoy it, so I'm going to try not to be homesick. No more tears today. It's a crucial point in the expedition. The group should be heading out of the desert, but still haven't completed their mission. Everyone's really hoping that we find a rhino, because today might be our last day of real trekking before we head out towards the coast. Once again, Perry, tracking up front, comes across some rhino tracks. These tracks are quite fresh, so we could be onto a rhino. But the prints lead in completely the opposite direction to the coast. There simply won't be time for the entire camel train to follow them. I'm proposing, Marty, that you and Ellie go and check out and try and find that rhino. And meanwhile, the rest of us are going to track on to make best speed. All of us together as a team, we can achieve both of these aims, and that is to see the rhino and reach the coast. As the team plough on, Martin and Ellie head off into the open plains with leader Emma. They know this is their very last chance to find a rhino, and the odds are stacked against them. You can see some tracks right here. Yeah, you can see them really clearly, don't you? Really, really clear. Yeah. Well, that means done. it could be quite close by. Suddenly, Martin spots something in the distance. They've found one of only 150 desert rhinos left in the world. Huge. We've come all this way to try a rhino, and there it is. We're so close to it, and it's almost oblivious to the fact that we're here, like watching it. It's just something that, that you never expect to see, even though we've been tracking it for so long and working towards it. It's still just. Such a surprise. They record as many details as they can for the Namibian charity Save the Rhino Trust. The information is vital to help the charity protect the rhinos from disease and poaching. The group are trying to be as quiet as possible, but rhinos have incredible hearing. It's getting up. When startled, they're known to charge. Turning to face us. He's looking straight at us. It's a tense moment. Wow. But fortunately, he turns tail. The one and a half ton rhino races off at an amazing 30 miles an hour. 
my heart stopped for about <laughs> five seconds because I was I really thought it was going to charge towards us, but it was really really cool. You've worked so hard and trapped it for so long, and um, it sort of makes all of the hard work worthwhile. Just seeing it, just for however long we saw it. Mission accomplished, the whole team must now concentrate all their energies on getting out of the desert. But there's one major obstacle still ahead of them. Guys, can you just look ahead over there? Wow. That is the start of the sand dunes. So does that mean we're nearly at camp? We're nearly at camp. We're nearly, we are nearly at the sand dunes. The huge dunes of the Namib Desert are the oldest in the world. They separate the flat desert plains from the Atlantic Ocean and form one of the most hostile environments in the world. Many shipwrecked sailors have perished here, giving rise to the name the Skeleton Coast. But after trekking for more than 40 miles through dry riverbeds, the team see them as a very welcome change. It's like a beach, it's amazing. It's like you can dig your fingers right and there's no rocks or anything. This is actually like what I imagined the desert to be. It does actually feel like you're just inside a painting. It's really, really good. Three, two, one, go! sand might be fun, but the group urgently need to put up survival shelters as temperatures in the dunes plummet after sunset. We've got our fleece and plus our rain jacket and our t-shirts. We're sleeping with our sleeping bag plus cotton line and everything. It's freezing. I didn't expect it to be this cold in the desert. And that's not the only problem with living in the sand dunes. For start, it's a bit uncomfortable. It's bumpy. And this thing's going to get soaking in the night because of the dew. So I'll probably wake up drenched. And the wind comes in through that side as well. So apart from that, it's, it's, it's okay. The whole team have a wet, uncomfortable night. Oh, don't shoot that! Oh, my God, I'm so All I want is to get down and dip on me, dear. And me? Hello, shut up! I've got sand in my sleeping bag. I've got sand in, in everything. The four o'clock start they planned is far from welcome. Exhausted, and I know we have like a whole day to like check across the sand, so it's gonna be hard. The team have to walk around 15 miles through the treacherous dunes in just two days. They need to break camp quickly and get away, but can't summon up the energy. We got off at four this morning, it's now eight o'clock and we haven't even started packing the camels. Half the group has fallen back asleep again. I'm worried now that we're not even going to leave before midday. As the rest of the team does, Amy's getting annoyed. This morning, I've been the only one that's bothered to pack, even though we should have left sort of two hours ago. You know, they're all going to go bananas if we don't get to the coast. And yet, you know, they're sleeping, so what? we're not going to fly there by magic carpet. What do they expect? Her efforts haven't gone unnoticed. Amy has done everything, absolutely everything. Everyone else is just sleeping around her while she's busy, merrily kind of getting everything done. Seven hours after getting up, they're finally ready to leave. Bruce isn't impressed by their lack of teamwork. Gather in pairs. Where's uh, Chris? Chris, just let go of the reins for a second. I mean, I don't care how long you lot take. That doesn't bother me in the slightest, but one thing that upsets me a little bit is if you sit around and you watch one of your team members work, because that's not good. And Amy has been really, really, really working so hard today. And a lot of you have sat and watched, and that is something that doesn't impress me much. Setting off with low morale on the toughest trek of their lives is not the start they were hoping for. And progress is incredibly slow in the soft sand of the dunes. We're going to be here all day. Oh, no. Come on. Come on, get up. 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 You. Up. 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 Come on. Get up. The team are navigating themselves, but can't just head in a straight line. You know, which way? It's quite hard to walk in the sand dunes because 
because of the camels, we're a bit restricted. Yep. Do we go up and over that thing, or should we go round? Round. Many of the slopes are too steep for the camels, so the team have to take a very roundabout route. We choose the general direction and find the easiest path, even if it means going off a wee bit. Eventually, we'll right ourselves and get back on. And after the late start, the group has to trek through the hottest part of the day. We do regret being, leaving so late because we could have covered so much in that six hours we spent messing about. By mid-afternoon, they're only a couple of miles closer to the coast. It's getting very frustrating. It seems that we're not actually getting anywhere. We come up to sand dune, and all you can see is more sand dunes. For once, the boys are first to suggest stopping for the night. Oh, well, we'll just stand down there. Take us two hours to put our stuff together. Why don't we only walk until half four? Okay, carry on arguing. You're just going around in circles. The debate is about whether or not we keep on walking today because it's only about a quarter to four and we could get another couple of miles done or whether we camp nearby. We should walk. We should play. Will we? Me and Dee have always wanted to walk on. And they like, no, we stop here. We're nothing, we're nothing. Well, the tables have turned. Two and a half hours. Yeah, Shut well, up! Perry! No. I'm having none of it! No, no, no! Oh, Perry, listen to me! Listen to me! Listen to me! Listen to me! Listen to With another cold, wet night ahead, Emma takes a decision to stop and make camp. The boys feel they've gained a rare victory over the girls. They've always won all the arguments, so it's about time me and Perry had our say, and we, we've won. And I think they're very jealous and annoyed. That we're camping here because it is perfect. Look, you've got a huge big sand dune to play on, you've got nice shade, and it's not windy, so it's, I can't get any better than this. They face a punishing final day tomorrow, but they're determined to enjoy their last evening in such an extraordinary location. Three, two, <laughs> As night falls, Chef Perry cooks up one of his specialities. It doesn't taste too bad, but it seems to come in lumps rather than sort of individual pieces of spaghetti. At least it's warm, um, but that's kind of the only right. good thing about it. It's probably the worst meal ever. Glue and spaghetti. <laughs> Despite all the hardships, it's starting to hit them that the expedition is almost over. You know, coming to the end of it, you feel really sad because you've been here for three weeks and although we're never in the same place, it kind of feels like home, really. Today was actually the best day of my life I've ever had. It's really, really good. I'll never forget this. It's been absolutely amazing. And as it's went on, I'm looking back and I'm really, it has been the experience of a lifetime. For the first time, Promise Campbell does not know what to say. I can't believe it. We're all going home. I'm going to go home, but I'm going to miss it. Dawn on their last day is unforgettable as the mist rolls in from the sea. But the stunning view also highlights the struggle they face to get out of the dunes. Yesterday we only covered about three to four miles. Yeah, I think it might be a bit harder today. They have to trek at least ten miles to reach the sea. That's if they can find a route through. We just need we to get out of this little yeah. trap here. That bit's too steep. It's like that. That's actually steeper when you bring it all the way down. Yeah, but also well, we've gone down there. No? Go there, yeah. Yeah, but that looks quite steep. No, it's, it's not. Really it's not, man. Are you sure the camels can get round there? Sure. Hope so. Come, come, Nelson. Martin, meanwhile, is having camel troubles of his own. Whenever I walk too slow, he kicks me. And then when I walk too fast, they have a go at me. So I either have to walk too fast and get shouted at by her, or walk slow and get kicked by him. Come on, you stupid thing. Walk!
late morning brings a major morale boost for the tired trekkers. Well, as you can see the sea over that way. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> Look, can you see it? Oh, it's the sea! <laughs> oh, it's the best view I've ever seen in my life. Check that out. It's like the end, we can see it. It doesn't look that far away, so it's kind of spurred people on a bit. Well, it's easier for the camels to follow. Yep. Are you sure? You got the same. But seeing the sea and getting to it are two very different things. But if the sea is there, the sand dunes are there. But where we, we want to go... We want to get to the sea, not the sand dunes, <laughs> no. so we go that but way. But we want to go to that point, Martin. That point. Despite being so close to their final destination, they end up walking for hours in the burning heat of the desert. Looks like we're going around in circles. We can see the sea, but it feels like we're never going to get there. It just keeps going on and on and on. Even though we can see the sea, it just doesn't get any closer. It's getting a bit frustrating now. Chris? Is it too steep for the camels? Just and worse is to come. They managed to navigate themselves into a steep basin. We've come up here and there's a big ditch, which obviously the camels can't handle, so I don't know what we're going to do at the moment. I think we're going to have to turn back. Keep on going forward. We're trapped. We're trapped. We can't try we're and get up, up there. Look how steep that is. They're just a stone's throw from the coast, but if the camels can't make it up the slope, the team face the daunting prospect of retracing much of their route. With full packs, it takes everything the camels have got to make it up and over the ridge. And before long, Chris has the news they've all been waiting for. This is the last dune. We have to go down here, and then it's, there's a few obstacles, but we can find our bearings pretty much straight. Oh, promise, promise, listen to it. One more, and we're there. This is it. They've navigated successfully through one of the world's most hostile deserts. We've just come through a kind of mini canyon and we're just, we can just see the sea now. It's awesome. After six days and more than 50 miles of trekking, the eight adventurers have finally made it to the Skeleton Coast. <laughs> It's just the biggest sense of achievement I've ever felt in my life. It just kind of makes all the hard work worth it because this is what we aim to do. We've been walking for days and days and living off like porridge and stuff and eventually just getting here, just the best ever. You know, like walk that distance, everyone's just coming down, everyone's just happy. Lovely, lovely group, amazing terrain, brilliant expedition, could not have wished for more. They've achieved more than they thought possible and more than I thought possible. What they have done in the last few weeks is really quite amazing. All the amazing bits we've done and all the things we're never going to forget in our lives. Definitely worth it because I can't never get this opportunity again. We've started right right now. We've built a and Tosa. We've trekked over 50 miles. And now we're finally at a case and we've jumped in. Yeah, and it just symbolises the end of the journey. It's everything we bought 50 miles for and it's just it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs>